Thank you so much, y'all. I'm on the radio. There's about seven of them back there. So if you want to get one, you fast readers, take one home and read it and bring it back. That'd be uh, the slow readers. Have it. And uh, they, they can keep it for a while. They're on the back uh, table back there in the, in the lobby way. And, uh, so pick you up one of those and uh, read on that. It's, it's good reading. Uh, that's his last teaching to his disciples, 14, 15, and 16. That's his last teaching here upon the earth. And so it's a good little book. Um, we talked about uh, what we're counting on. This is kind of a ex extent to that. Uh, it's what are you expecting. Uh, just time together, I guess, just kind of tie those two together. We talked about the 12 spies that uh, Moses sent out into the land. And uh, I, I just got to thinking about uh, the people counting on uh, the leadership to bring back a, well, I hope this is what they were counting on. They were counting on them bringing back a report of the land. That's why they were sent out to bring back a report of, of the, the land, the, which they gave. They gave the land. They said it's a land flow of milk and honey. Then they added their opinion. They added what they thought. Now look at this. What they thought influenced the people that were there waiting to get to go in. Uh, it changed everything because of 10 people. Uh, because they, they told them, said, yeah, God is good. Here's the land. Here's the proof. It flows milk and honey. But, okay, have you ever heard a sermon like that? God is good. God is powerful, but it's just not for you. And most people are already feeling uh, not worthy. That's the way most people don't feel worthy of the air they breathe, you know. Uh, and so they're already not feeling worthy. And so when somebody stands in leadership and says, well, God is good, ain't he? But... You know, if you get to go to heaven, you know, then you're, you, you know, that's more than you deserve. You ever heard that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you might have like way back there, you know. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> you know, God just, you know, you know, God had to do everything he could just to get, let you go to heaven, you know. So you shouldn't ask for anything else. You shouldn't expect anything else. You ex shouldn't expect any blessings or healings or deliverance. You shouldn't expect any uh, prosperity. You shouldn't expect anything because he had to send Jesus to die for you to get you there to heaven. So just wait on heaven. And so a lot of people, it affects them because they're already dealing with unworthiness. And they really take to those messages. And they really, hey man, that's right. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're not but worms. We're just old dogs. Well, you're calling Jesus a worm. You're calling him a dog. Why are you? No, no, I'm not. I would never call Jesus that. Well, we are in him. We are nothing of ourselves. Paul said in this flesh dwells no good thing. Okay? In this flesh. But we are not in the flesh. We are in the spirit. If so, be the Spirit dwells in you. We're not in that anymore. We're, my Bible says that I'm a new creation. There's never, that's why we said we live in the greatest time, because there was no one like us before the church. There was no one like us. We're a new creation. As good as Adam had it, we got it better now. We got it better now. 
Because he said you're a new creation. There's no one a new creation in Christ Jesus and what he has done for us. And if the church ever gets a hold of that, if believers ever start believing, man, it'll be, it'll be awesome. Believe. I told Angie yesterday, I'm going to stop calling believers believers if they don't believe. Right? Oh, I'm a believer. And I tell you something, well, I don't believe that. Oh, you're not a believer then. Oh, yeah, I am a believer. Then you should believe that. That's how that comes out of his word. Right? If it comes out of his word, then you should believe it if you're a believer. Right? I just believe that. All right, let's start the message. What are you expecting? Anybody in here expecting? Rachel's grinning. Uh, I just grinning. Uh, I got an announcement to make, Rachel. Got an announcement to make. <laughs> she lit up. I was like, okay. okay. Uh, Luke 24. Luke 24 and verse 1. We're going to read this. Uh, now on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came into the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. <clears throat> and it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember, remember, how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. So did Jesus tell them before he died that he would rise again? He did. He told them many times what would happen. Here's what's going to happen. Now, this is a man they have left off and followed. Right? Peter said, we've left all and followed thee. We've left our homes, our business. We've left and followed thee. They left all and followed him and didn't even believe him. And didn't even believe him. But we've sacrificed some things. We've given up some things. And we don't even believe him. We don't even believe this is true. Well, what did he say? I'm going to die. I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to rise again on the third day. Okay? And returned from the sepulchre and told all these things unto the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and, the, and Mary, the mother of James, and other women that were with them, which told these things unto the apostles. And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Okay, now Jesus said, I'm going to die and rise again. And then these women go to prepare the body, put some spices on it, and they come back and they said, he's not there, he's risen. Shouldn't they believe him? Believe these women? Shouldn't they go, oh yeah, that's what he said. So, but no, they believed them not. Then arose Peter and ran into the sepulchre, and stooping down, he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves and departed. What was he doing after he departed? Why do you wonder about something that you've already been told about and is proven? Why are you wondering? And he's wondering, wondering what's took place. Wonder what's going on. This man who Peter said, I will die with you. Peter took up a sword and cut a guy's ear off to keep Jesus from being taken. Peter that walked on the water. Peter that was there when he raised uh, the little girl up off her deathbed. Peter that was there when he was transfigured and, and uh, on the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter leaves and he's wondering in himself at that which was to come to pass. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about 
three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he went, he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that you have with one another and as you walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said to him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast, hast not known the things which are come to pass in these days? And he said unto them, What thing? They said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death, and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. But we trusted past tense. We thought he was going to be the one. Uh, and besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. How much more proof do you need? How much more proof do you need? Uh, which said he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter in his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh to the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone farther. They constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is evening, and the day is far spent. He went in to tarry with them, and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them. He took bread and blessed it, break, and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened unto us the scriptures? Now go to Mark 16, verse 9. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared unto them appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. After that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told it unto the residue, neither believed they them. Afterward he appeared unto the eleven as they said at me, and upbraided them uh, with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now who else finds that funny? I'm the only one. It's funny that he says to these men that did not believe the women, did not believe the two, did not believe Jesus when he said it. He says to them, now you go. Because now you know. Because I have appeared. What were they waiting on? They're waiting on clear evidence. They're waiting on Jesus himself. They're waiting to see it for themselves to look at him and to handle him for themselves. Because most people don't believe when you get up and give a testimony of the miracle working power of God, the grace of God, most people don't believe it. Now, I don't want to kill testimony time for no reason. Hearing those is building our faith. You know, but people, you know, uh, when you hear a testimony, if you're a, a unbelieving believer, if you're an unbelieving believer, 
When you hear a testimony that God's healed somebody, delivered or raised them from the dead, that you go, oh man, that's awesome. But inside you're going, yeah, they wouldn't sing in the first place. They're just saying all that to get attention. That's what Jesus did. He told me he's going to die and raise again. He just done that for attention. They don't believe. These are the apostles, the eleven who have followed him for three and a half years, seen all these things, and they're unbelieving believers. And they waited until... Now, wouldn't that get in your mind after Jesus commissioned you to go and after he sent you out to go preach to others? You're up preaching Jesus is alive. You're going, I didn't even believe it. They're wanting a manifestation. They're wanting to see him. They're wanting to know that he is alive with their own two eyes. They're, they're wanting to know all of it. Now let's go to John. Let's, let's throw off on this guy. He said, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, which is twin, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples, therefore, said unto him, we have seen the Lord. Boy, aren't they great. We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. What is Thomas? He's an unbelieving believer. Right? I mean, Thomas has left some stuff and followed Jesus when he was here in his earthly ministry. He suffered some persecution, was commissioned to go out. He went out. Thomas has went out, healed the sick, raised the dead, and cast out devils, and preached the kingdom. Has he not? Yes, he has. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, I can help myself preach. It just takes a lot longer, but you know, I ain't no hurry anyway. So, uh, Thomas has done all of these things. And so, when he told me, he said, Now you go out. While Jesus is here, he sent him out to go preach the kingdom where he would come to. And so, you're going out and you're preaching, and, you're, and people are demon possessed, and you're casting the devils out. Because they came back and said, Even the devils are subject unto us in the next. So, there was proof. Dead people are getting up. Sick people are being healed. Lepers are being cleaned. And you are the one there. You're doing all of this. Well, you got to know in your mind, I couldn't do this before I met Jesus. So there has to be something about this man that is different. He is a... And what they said was he was a prophet. Mighty indeed. They didn't say he was the son of God. They said he was a prophet. And what happened to all the prophets? Isaac and all of them. What happened to them? They died. Isaiah and all of them. They died. They were prophets. They died. They were for a time and then they passed away. That's why they looked at Jesus. He's a prophet. And they thought what would happen was he was a prophet. Mighty in word and deed. He's like Elijah. Man, Elijah had some power. I mean, he could call down fire on people. That's what they wanted Jesus to do. Call down fire upon Caesar and all of Rome and restore Israel. And then hand it to them. And they would have ruled and reigned and then passed it on to their kids. You see, they never got out of the carnal reality of who Jesus was. And I, that's what happens to us a lot of times. We never get out of the carnal reality of who Jesus is. And get into the spiritual realm. And that's what Jesus came to preach. The kingdom of heaven. He brought us the kingdom of God. Through the Holy Ghost. And that was his point. He sent them out to preach the kingdom. And they said, we do at this time restore the kingdom. It's not for you to know. And that's all they were interested in. Was just the physical sense of who Jesus was. Was he a prophet? He was a prophet mighty in word and deed. And he could have took over, but he didn't and he died. Now what we're going to do? Because we're marked now. The Romans are mad at us and the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they kicked us out. I mean, we're, we're without a country now. If you think about it, those people were without anywhere to go now. 
because they done made everybody in the temple mad, the Pharisees and stuff, they're all ticked off because they're following Jesus. And Jesus, you know, he wasn't number one on their list. And so now they don't know what they're going to do because they have followed somebody whom he told them who he was and the Holy Ghost even revealed it to Peter, but they just couldn't get out of their own way. They just kept looking at it. This is just the way it is because we are, we're like them. We're too ruled by our senses. Well, if Jesus would walk right down this aisle, then I'd believe him. If Jesus would do it, then I would believe it. If Jesus would walk in here and lay hands on somebody, yeah, I believe they could get healed. Well, you're never going to see anybody get healed that way. Why not? Because Jesus left and he commissioned it to the church. He said, now here you go, do that. You see, our, what's, what's your expectation? What's your expectation? What are you expecting? You know, it's most, it's, it's by the word now. We're begotten by the word, the living word of God. And so when he says it, when he says that, that that's all you need. Like Randall was saying, when you get a word on it, you, you don't need, uh, you don't need 10,000 confirmations on it. When you got a word on it, that's just the way it is. You just take it and go, the word says this by stripes, we were him, period. It's done, okay? And so this is what he has. And so Thomas, uh, after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, doors being shut, stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, behold my hands. Reach hither thy hand, and thrust it in my side. And be not faithless, but believe me. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Is there any faith involved in that? No. None. You've seen me. I'm standing here. I was dead. You've seen me dead. Now you see me standing here. That's why you believe. He said, Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Who's blessed? Those that, because you see, Jesus wasn't going to stay. <laughs> It, you know, everybody's wanting to see, you know, I want to see the miraculous. I want to see something miraculous. I want to see this. I want to see that. Boy, that really helped our faith. I want to hold on that. No, we're looking for the supernatural. We're not looking really for the miraculous. We're looking for the supernatural. Well, how does the supernatural work? Well, it works through the Word. The word says this, like Randall was saying, true fact. True fact. Now, we think those are the same. Most people think that's the same. The fact is the truth. Mm -hmm. No, not really. The fact is you're sick. The fact is you're broke. The fact is you're depressed. That's a fact. It's not the truth. Why is it not the truth? Because it could be another way. It could be. It could be. Well, what's the difference? You. The difference is you. If you believe. If you believe in the truth. And allow it to come into your life. And, and just walk in. Then it's going to change the fact. Fact was everybody in here was headed for heaven. Right. You ever remember having a fear of dying? Because you know nobody? Just me. Because I believed in hell. I believed there was a hell and I thought if I die I'm going there. 
You know, of course, I used to think, well, I got to do better, so I go to hell. If I do better, I get to go to hell. I'm going to clean my act up, I get to go to hell. I had nothing to do with it. I had to depend on Jesus. But I didn't even want to depend on Jesus. I wanted to do it. But come to find out, all I had to do was believe on Jesus. And the fact was, I was headed to hell, but when I believed on Jesus, I'm not headed to hell anymore. I'm not condemned anymore. Right? I'm not repressed anymore. But I didn't know none of that stuff because nobody ever told me. Because I grew up around a bunch of unbelieving believers. That's tough, Pastor. I know it is, ain't it? That's, that's hard stuff, ain't it? And I can look back through life and go, you know, they meant well, but they were unbelieving believers. Their whole system was, you'll die one day and go to heaven. Why are you, why are you worried about anything down here? I'm not worried, but how do you get through life? Oh, you don't. You don't get through life. You're going to die. Death was their only solution. You'll die one day and you'll be in heaven. It'll be wonderful over there. Uh-huh. Okay. But if I don't die for like, say I live to be a hundred, what am I supposed to do between here and there? Well, hopefully you'll die sooner. <laughs> wow. When we all get to heaven, let's go today. Somebody shoot us. Okay? That's, I mean, there's no, how do we get any more? You know, if you shoot all your members when they become a member, how do you get more members? I'm not joining your club. If you die, oh, we have this club. And if you die, oh, it's really awesome. I, I don't want to die. I was living in death already. I want to live. I want life in that more abundant. His word says I can have it. What about that? Oh, that's when you die. What? Yeah, that's when you die. Everybody dies. <laughs> Don't go there, man. Stay with it. Stay with us. Uh, it says, uh, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. And that Notice it says, and that believing, and that believing, he didn't say, and having believed. Believing is not a past tense thing for us. Believing is a constant, everyday thing that you buy. We mean buy. Well, your flesh says, show me proof. I, I'm healed. By his stripes. My body says, show me proof. Because my body is aching. My body is in pain. My body is sick. My body says, show me proof. I want proof if I'm healed by his stripes. The proof is in the word that he said. So I believe that he did it. I believe he took stripes on his back. For my healing. I believe that. And what sealed it was. You see it wasn't Calvary. That did that. Calvary sealed the deal. He got his stripes before Calvary. Just do know that. They didn't hang him on the cross. And after he died they took him down. And put stripes on him. No. They put stripes on his back. And then they crucified him. So his Notice it didn't say, you know, his death. It said the stripes upon his back was for our healing. The wounds, the, the blue, it actually it's a, it's a blue well is what that word means. It's a blueness. I know that goes against everybody's belief because you watch the passion. Oh, they, they, they cut him to reverence. Uh, not according to the word. The word that they used for wound on his back or stripes was a, a, a blueness is what the word means. It's a raised well. Oh, no, that would near have been bad enough. Okay, let's go out and somebody give me a rod or a whip and let's put some blue whelps on your back and see how you like it. You ain't going to like it. Right? You ain't going to like that. 
And people try to make stuff out that isn't it. But he took stripes on his back. So you could see the stripes on his back when, they, when he's walking to Calvary. He goes to Calvary after that. Okay? They, they beat him in the face before he took the stripes. We're just going backwards now. But they played a good game with him, the Roman soldiers did. And they beat him because he couldn't answer the questions. And they beat him in the face. And his face swelled. Okay? Then they took him to the whipping post. And they whipped him. They're at the whipping post. And then they take and they give him your cross. And you get your cross. You'll say, well, why is the passion wrong? Well, the passion is wrong because if they had stripped him like they did, and I heard one preacher say his inside were hanging out. Well, his blood loss would have been so much that he would have never made it. But he carried his cross. And, and then they had to get a man to help him because he had been up for so long and they beat him in the face and whipped him on the back. And he had had any nourishment and he was weak. And so he couldn't make it. And they had a crown of thorn on his head. I mean, he'd been through some bad stuff. And you're all looking at me like, you're, you're making it like it wasn't that bad. It was that bad. But it's just not, I, what I'm trying to get you to see is, I want you to see what the Word says. The Word says he took wounds upon his back, blue welts upon his back. They whipped him like that. I want you to take what the Word says. I heard a preacher say the other day, he said, I'll take a King James Bible and straighten the Greek out. No, you can't. No, you can't. You, you need the Greek to look and, and find out what these words mean. Because we're trying to make stuff that ain't. I'm just trying to get you to see what the Word says and what happened to him is sufficient. So he takes the stripes on his back and then they nail him to the cross and he gives up the ghost. He doesn't die by their hands. He doesn't die because he lost all of his blood. Listen to me. I know they want it to sound like that, but he bled out and his heart burst and all that. No, he said, I have power to lay my life down and I have power to take it back up. This I have received my father. He gave his life. He said, no man. See, you can't leave out the other scriptures. No man takes my life from me. No man takes it. I give it up freely. If they had not done anything to him and, and just tied him to the cross and not nailed him to the cross, guess what would have happened to Jesus? He had died on the cross. Why? Because that's what he said. I'm going to die. I'm going to be crucified. And so he got up there, he hung there for six hours, and he said, it is finished. He gave up the ghost and he went home. The other two guys weren't dead. They had to break their legs for them to go on out. So he gave his life. They didn't take it from him. They didn't beat him to death. Holy Ghost, I don't know why you want me to go with it. That wasn't even my thoughts this morning. Uh, but I just wanted, I guess the Holy Ghost wanted us to see, take the word for what it says. Dig and find out what it really says and then just believe that. And don't be moved and don't, don't, don't wait for the next film to come out or the next series to come out to believe because you have to see it. Believe it just because it says it. And if you'll do that, then in believing, you can get your healing. You can get your deliverance. You can get your salvation. You can get whatever it is that you need by believing. Correct? Uh, Hebrews 10. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So we believe and we're expecting that it will save our soul. That our soul will finally line up with our spirit one day. That's what I'm working on right now. Work on it every day. And if you're not working on it, you're behind. you got to work on your soul every day through the Word and through believing the Word. Correct? So that's why we have the Word. That's why I get up here and teach. is because I want you to have the Word so that you can believe that it will change your soul. 
And so your soul will line up with your spirit and get on board with it because your flesh is always going to be your flesh. Right? And when your flesh, when your kids flesh, when they were little, got out of line, what'd you do? Big. Big person. Okay. That should never go away. Tracy, I agree. That should never go away. We may not swallow another hand, but you should never stop correcting. Right? You never stop correcting. You know, well, you're, you're this age, you can do whatever you want to do now. I don't care. No, you don't never say that. No matter how old it is, you're going to always be corrected. Right? You're always going to be corrected. And if we're mature in the Lord, we could really help one another. If we were really mature in the Lord, we could really help one another. You know that what you're doing? Eh, it's not good. It's really not good. If you're mature in the Lord, if you're mature enough to say it, and they're mature enough to receive. And if they're not, then just smack them. <laughs> right? Just smack them. Right? Go back to that. If they're not mature enough to receive the word, just smack them. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Um, he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So what are we expecting? If you've got faith, it's the evidence of things hopeful. Or, now faith is a substance of things hopeful, the evidence of things not seen. Faith. It's what we're expecting. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we will, we're expecting the word of God to be true. Right? I'm expecting the word of God to be true. That's what I'm expecting. And it doesn't matter how long it takes. Right? How come we wait nine months on a baby to be born? Huh? That's, a, that's how long it takes. How come it takes that long? Huh? Because that's the way God said it from the beginning. Does everything take nine months? Huh? Some takes long. Some don't take as long. Right? Why is that? If it works the same way, I mean, you, you know, male, female come together, whatever it is, and it has, you know, why does it do that? Because that's the way God said that. Right? Did God set it up like that or not? Yes. How many evolutionaries have we got in here? No, it just evolved in there and some involved. They'll all evolve one day to be nine months. No. Now what's the way it's set up? For some reason, he set it up like that. How did he set it up like that? By the word. Right? He set that up by his word. And so now, faith is substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Without faith, went on to say, any translated, because he had faith, he pleased God. Without faith is impossible to please him. He comes to God, must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without expecting, listen to this, it's the Holy Ghost, just give this to me. Without expecting his word to be true and it to manifest and do what it's supposed to do, without that, it's impossible to please God. All you have is religion at that point. Listen to this, Luke 11, 34. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, that when the, the eye is single, the whole body also is full of light. But when the eye is evil, the body also is full of darkness. Let me read this to you in another. The eye 
is the lamp of your body. When your eyes clear, spiritually perceptive, and focused on God, your whole body also is full of light, benefiting from God's precepts. But when it is bad, spiritually blind, your body also is full of darkness, devoid of God's word. One more translation. Listen, your eye, your outlook, the way you see is your lamp. If your way of seeing is functioning well, then your whole life will be in light. But if your way of seeing is darkness, then your life will be dark, a dark place. You see what he was saying? If you're looking to God's word, and that's all, the, the eye is the lamp of the body. The eye, and it's seen, and it's only looking at God's word. Which is light, which is light. He said, then that will get into your body, and your whole body will be full of light. Because that's all you look at. But if you look at evil, he said, then your body is going to be full of darkness. So what do we look at as believers? We look at his word and just his word. What did he say on this matter? Right? How many in here have used uh, Google? How many Google stuff? Or, oh gosh. Wow. Okay, that's awesome. That's great. Now I want to kind of shift you over. If there's anything going on in your life, you need to Google the Word of God. When you Google it, find out what it says, right? And do that. And don't do anything else. How many of you have Googled something more than once? Why did you Google it more than once? Because you didn't like what you found the first time, did you? Google that again. Now, I don't believe that. Let's Google it. Let's ask Siri. Let's ask Alexa. Let's ask somebody that I don't think that's right. We, we were doing the crowd here a while back, and I have never seen so many different opinions about how to do craft. I was like, Okay. Okay. Sorry we asked. You know, you put that out there, you know, hey, you need a little help. I'm a canning crap, you know, and we've canned crap. It's been many moons ago. So we did, you know, if we did it, we couldn't really remember. And so we can put it out there and kind of ask people and then put it out there on the internet. People like, buddy, here you come. We had it as a set for six years before you even did it. Uh, <laughs> Some people say, oh, you need it the next day. Some people said, you got to do this, you got to do that. And I'm like, gosh, gosh, this is awful. Whoa. And you get to looking at all of that. Well, what, what happens to you? Huh? Yeah. You're confused, aren't you? You're confused. What do I do? What do I do? Because I have found out after being married 43 years, I just want to be told what to do. Amen. Right? If we're being honest, I just want to be told what to do. Just tell me what to do. I'll do it. End of story. Let's go on.
the snow from heaven returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Now, that was one of those things. It hit me. I've read, I've heard this verse a lot, and I've quoted it, but he said it will prosper in the thing whereto I send it. He said it will prosper in you. It will prosper in you where I send it. Right? He sent us the word. He gave us his word. So he sent the word. He said, it will prosper in you if you let it. He's, he's telling us, this is what's going to happen. It will prosper in the thing where to I sent it. But your traditions have made void the word of God. Remember the four souls? One good soul, the other three, one got choked out, one... One was uh, too stony, didn't have enough depth. The other one, Satan came and stole. Not nothing wrong with the seed, nothing wrong with the word. It shall accomplish and prosper in the thing that I sent it to. And if you believe that, receive that, then it's going to prosper in you. And so yeah, I take that word in and I go, I know that I'm healed. I know that I'm whole. I know that I'm well. I know this. And my body's going, no, you're not. There's pain. No, you're not. This is not right. No, you're not. This is not right. No, I, I look at this one thing, and this one thing I look at, and it fills my body full of life. Uh, the angel said to Mary, your relative is Elizabeth, and her old age has conceived a son, and this is now the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing is ever impossible. But what that really means is no word from God shall be without power or impossible uh, or impossible of fulfillment. No rhema word is without the power to fulfill itself. What does that mean? Let's put it in layman's term. You sow tomatoes, seed, you get Tomatoes. You sow uh, corn, you get corn. All right? His word contains within itself the power to bring what he has said. Right? He is, today, you remember he spoke to them in parables? And they're like, I don't understand. They walk away. I don't get it. And they would, his disciples, what did they keep saying? Explain this to me. What is? What does this mean? You speaking to them in parables? Stop it! They don't get it. Neither do we. That's what they were really saying. They didn't say that. These people don't understand. We. Oh, we know. We know exactly what's going. No, they would ask him, "What? What's this mean? Why are you talking like this?" And he said, "Because they they closed their eyes and their heart is waxed thick." So they don't hear and they don't see. The prophet Isaiah prophesied of this. People would get to where they won't hear the word of God. But he said, you see and you hear. No, they didn't. Well, they did because they asked. And when they asked, he told them. And then they went, oh, okay, I get it now. Oh, I see what you're talking about now. But he, he had to do that till the day he ascended. That's why he said, go to Jerusalem, wait for the Holy Ghost. Because when he comes, he's going to guide you into all truth. He's going to reveal these things to you that are hidden from you because we live in a body. And sometimes we're too drawn to the flesh of how I feel, how, I, how my emotions are, and how this is, and how the statistics are, and how everybody else is doing. We're drawn to that. That's why you go for Google. Because your flesh wants to know now. I can't wait. Right? 
Gmail or Google. What should I do next? I would to it if I did. Um, David said this, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. One translation says, I will move past my enemies with this one sure hope that with my own eyes I will see the goodness of the eternal in the land of the living. I will move past my enemies with this one sure hope that with my own eyes I will see the goodness of the eternal in the land of the living. I will defeat my enemies by looking only at the word of God. Everybody stand up. Isn't that awesome? That's worth staying just to hear that one verse, but we're doing better than everybody else. If you're a believer, are you a believer? Don't be an unbelieving believer. Don't be an unbelieving believer. Believe his word. Amen. Amen. Get ready for the blessing.